Hello, my name is Nathan Brummel, and I hope you're having a blessed day. It is the Lord's Day here in Indiana. And on this day, how fitting it is that we reflect on one of the songs of the Old Testament, on Psalm 22. Now, I want to bring out two things of Psalm 22. One is the fact that Psalm 22 is a song of the cross. So that's a very grave matter. In fact, this song is remarkable because David long ago sings by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit about his greater son and how he would suffer on the cross. But it's also a beautiful song because David sings about how God was his God from his mother's womb. So there's a rich covenant theology here. The psalm begins famously with the words that Jesus would take on his own lips on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? So David begins this song in his own situation, in his own life, where he has some sense of somehow God being at a distance from him, God having forsaken him. But how profound this cry would be when Jesus, during the time of darkness, as he is hanging on the cross, cries out this, this, this same song, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. And so Christ there, when it is dark, from noon till three o'clock in the afternoon, pitch dark in what should be the brightest part of the day, he cries out this cry of forsakenness. Yes, this is a song of the cross. David talks about how he faces all kinds of challenges here, but what he says also comes to be referring to Jesus. In verse 14, he says, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. He talks about how he is so thirsty. He talks about how people compass, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. And then David, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, puts words into the Messiah's mouth. They pierced my hands and my feet. And so here we have a reference to the crucifixion. And yet the Messiah says in verse 17, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. And none of Jesus' bones would be broken while he was on the cross. He cries out to, to God for help. And so what a sorrowful song this is. This is a song of the cross. Jesus is on the cross going to recognize this song as his when he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is a striking psalm. Psalm 22 predicts Jesus' suffering on Calvary. But there's also something beautiful about this song in verse 9, verses 9 and 10 where David sings about how God was his God from his mother's womb. What an amazing thing that God is the God of covenant children from their earliest moments. The psalmist said, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Their God is almost pictured as if he's like a midwife. And when the baby is born, the baby is in the hands of the midwife. It's like God's protective care, just like the hands of a midwife, are there for us at our very earliest moments of life. Notice how David can say with us believers today, God took us out of the womb. And then he says, you did make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Now, isn't that wonderful? Even covenant children have the seed of faith. There's a childlike inherent trust even from infancy in one's God. And then he says it stronger in verse 10. He says, Thou art my God from my mother's belly, from my mother's womb. You are my God. You see, David wasn't a Baptist. David didn't think that only older people who were like in their teenage years could be children of God. He knew that he was already a child of God. David had received the sign of the covenant in the Old Testament, which was circumcision, on the eighth day of his birth, no doubt. And speaking about God, he says, You are my God. You are my saving God. And that's what I can say, too. I grew up in a covenant home, and God showed mercy to me from my earliest years. What an amazing thing it is that God is our God from our mother's wombs. Now, Jesus... According to his humanity, he could also say this too, that God watched over the marvelous birth of Jesus 
in a cave or a stall in Bethlehem. And how much more did Jesus as a human baby need to have God's care too, being born in such a wretched context and in a dirty stall? But the Son of God came into this world. He became man and he came to suffer. He came to pay for the sins of his people. He came to cry out, cry out about how God had forsaken him. Why? So that we believers in Jesus might always be accepted and loved by our God.